What's good people, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Guys, today we're going to talk about why I butt chug my pants. Butt chugging, what is butt chugging? We're going to cover all that today. And today, butt chugging is probably going to help you get some of those nice banging roots. So stick around, stay tuned, and let's get into it. Yes, guys, so watering plants is super important, and everyone knows that. We need plants, we need water, plants need water to live, right? But a lot of people water through the top, and nothing is wrong with that. Watering over top is fine, a lot of people do that, but it can lead to indiscriminate watering. You may get some dry spots, you may find water seeping through and not evenly soaking up your medium, so that can be an issue. And what I've noticed is that a lot of you may think your plant is well watered, but if you actually tuck things out and looked in there, you may get a little bit of a surprise. Bruh. Now, butt chugging is pretty much watering your plants from the bottom. It's bottom watering, and soaks that water up through capillary through capillary action it literally wicks it all the way up because the soil is like a natural wicking substrate Sus substance substance Bruh. it's actually a substrate and a substance Perfect. now there are a few reasons why you may want to bottom water over just pouring water over top a lot of people know that pests are something that can invade your grow room something like fungus gnats they really like moist layers of soil over top so that's something that you want to look out for if you're watering over top butt chugging works real great with smaller plants but you can do it with medium size and sometimes larger plants as well it all depends on how you actually do the butt chug now for me when i start off my plants i like to pop a little hole in the bottom of my solo cup just like that a lot of people like to pop small holes at the bottom, but I like a big one. Bruh. Small holes were great for drainage, but sometimes the roots go through and get stuck in there. When you're transplanting out, those roots can literally just burst and rip up, and you don't want that. So I found when you pop a bigger hole, the roots can slip all the way through really easily. Now, as you guys can see, we already got roots coming out. So a lot of times, I'll start off super small and in the solo cups, and I pop a hole in one, and then I use another one, and this acts as my reservoir. That's a double solo cup method. One got a hole, one Perfect. doesn't. And it's simple. I just take one out, pour some water into this one which acts as the reservoir and then I pop the one with the hole back in there. Let it sit and that capillary reaction sucks it all up. Now that works great for smaller plants, seedlings, that sort of stuff because you don't end up with overwatering issues. Sometimes people go real hard over top with a small baby seedling and a lot of times that can cause your plants to get overwatered and they can drown before they even get off to the races. Remember, small seedlings don't have massive root systems so they can't uptake it. Now what I found is that when you do this, it actually causes the roots to search out that water. So it searches out the water source and it goes all the way down to the bottom of the solo cup and that promotes and vigorous root growth. Now you can overwater your plants as well, so don't get crazy. Only pour a little bit. I usually pour just about up to this first line right here, and I allow it to get sucked up really nicely. If it's bone dry, I may add a little bit over top, but not a whole lot. It's a lot more accurate for seedlings if you just spray a little spray over top with a spray bottle. That way you don't put too much. Perfect. But case in point, the plants love it and those roots explosive growth, man. Now for slightly smaller pots, if you got a little saucer just like this one, you can use that as your reservoir, quote unquote reservoir. It's literally a saucer, it catches excess runoff, but you can also use it to bottom water. So you pour some of that in there and literally let it sit. When it sits, it'll soak a lot of that up through the natural wicking action. If you look back after about 30 minutes or so and there's a lot of water still in there, you probably did too much, so probably just throw that out. You don't want that plant to be sitting in any water, any excess water. That can lead to root rot and all sorts of pathogens. Bruh. Speaking of pathogens, that's one thing that can happen when you top water. A lot of times people top water and get in there and a lot of that water bounces is back up off the soil and hits the bottom of your leaves or just gets the grow room really dirty. It gets water all over your tent, dirty water everywhere, and that's not fun. But pathogens can occur when that dirt sits on the leaves and just settles there. You really need to look out for that, guys. So that's why bottom watering is pretty useful when your plants are small and susceptible to all sorts of stuff. Now, as the plants get bigger, you can use self-watering bases. You can use all those sorts of self-wicking bases and stuff like that or drip irrigation systems. Mars Hydra's got some great drip irrigation systems. Actually, check out some of these dope lights as well, man. This video is brought to you by Mars Hydro, where they have a variety of grow lights and grow tents for growers of all experience levels. Whether you're a small home grower or setting up a slightly bigger commercial operation, they have the tents and lights for you. They have tents for every space and need, including the new 2-in-1 tents. And they also have a wide variety of lights to choose from, including full-spectrum LED and the new detachable FCE series. Links to all of the products that we use on this channel, including the Mars Hydro Grow Lights, are in the description below. Be sure to use the links below to support the ICANTHC channel. You can also save a few bucks on the Mars Hydro website by using the code ICANTHC at checkout for store-wide savings. Don't forget to use the code and save yourself a few bucks. Now, back to the video. 
Butt chugging can be a little bit slow, but as your plants get a little bit bigger, some people like to add these plants into little containers just like this. So they'll fill this with water, use this as the reservoir, and add a couple plant pots in it and let that water soak up through capillary action and suck up into that plant pot. It's all about what works for you. Personally, I don't use the big reservoirs like that, but I am a huge fan of the double solo cup action and of just having a nicely sized reservoir that you can really get in there. This one is a little bit on the tighter side, but something sort of like this really works great. You can get these for like cents at Walmart, so. Perfect. Like I said, for me, the aim of butt chugging is to make sure I get those nice roots. I don't want too much water in the reservoir cup because I want just enough so that it can soak up and it can actually get in there, but not sit in there and cause root rot. So you really need to eyeball it, and that's why I don't put too much. The biggest risk is leaving your plants in that res for too long with a lot of water in there. That can cause root rot. So again, it's how you do it. You want to be on the nice side, not on the bad side. Now to me, bottom ordering, butt chugging has got a lot of pros and it's got some cons as well, but I, pref I think the pros outweigh the cons, especially once you dial it in properly. A lot of times your plants can't get root bound in smaller pots and if you're watering it, water literally just does not get to the bottom. Those roots up at top are thirsty and they're going to drink all that water before it gets down to the bottom. So any bottom water, a lot of times that'll ensure that you get a nice even watering throughout your entire plant. All the roots are happy and you're happy. But if your plants are root bound, you should probably transplant out of that anyway. Another great benefit of butt chugging is that it avoids any disruption over top of the surface and we mentioned that before but not only that some people do put light nutrient mixes in the reservoir and add nutrients through the bottom and that way the roots really go down there and search out those nutrients and you get that nice even mix which is all important now it's not all fun and games because sometimes there are drawbacks and there's one big drawback that you guys need to be aware of when it comes to butt chugging now butt chugging because of what it is by definition bottom watering your boat you are literally watering through the bottom it does not actually flush the soil so as per usual you water over top and the full anything in there can get flushed. Flushing is controversial. This is not the forum for that, but I'm just talking what it is. There's a lot of people who are not in the medicinal plant space also flush their plants, so it actually is a thing. A lot of residue from unused fertilizers and chemicals and stuff like that can stay in the pot and that can toxify the soil over time. Flushing is a natural advantage of top-down watering. So you're literally watering over top. It's like rain. It washes everything out and into your container into your drainage pot which you can then swap out or you can empty or whatever the case may be. So that's why it's important to understand both watering methods and a lot of times you got to use both to get the best of both worlds. Personally for smaller plants, things like solo cups or things like this, one gallon pots, I'm bottom water. But anything bigger than that, I may mix it up depending on how the plant looking. So those are some of the pros and cons that definitely benefits to both top watering, bottom watering. It all depends on what you're trying to achieve, what stage your plant is at, what sort of outcome you're looking for, whether you're trying to avoid pests or whether you're trying to promote root growth. It's like with every everything in life there are pros and cons when it comes to it drop it in the comments down below and let me know when it comes to watering what do you guys do do you guys have an automated system do you guys hand water do you top water bottom water how do you guys do it what works best for you always interested to find out what you guys got to say and don't forget smash that like cop some diesel dog gear join the i can vip bean club we got a lot of great stuff going out to all the gromies so definitely tune in and if you ain't part of the fam you're missing out so i'm gonna see you there because you are the fam and we love you guys smash the like and hit that bell